Hello, everyone. Welcome today to Fearfully and Wonderfully Me podcast, a podcast designed to help you become the leader you are destined to be. I am so excited today for today's episode because I have a special friend and a guest um, joining me for today's episode. Tisha uh, is my friend, Tisha Janes, and you're going to get to hear more about her and her story, but just to share a little bit about her with you. Tisha Farmer Janes is the founder and the director of Choosing Him Ministries. She is a fearless leader with an amazing heart for women's ministry. Choosing Him Ministries came out of her love for the Lord and her passion to connect women with Jesus, his word, and each other. Tisha, welcome to the show. Hi, Rhea. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm just so excited for our conversation today because I know you have a lot of wisdom and insight um, to share. And, you know, you and I, what was interesting is you and I scheduled this conversation like a while ago. It might have been a year ago. I don't even know because <laughs> if you're like me, 2020 just evaporated. I don't know where it went, but um and we had to postpone it and postpone it a couple times because of unexpected uh, things that came up. And so <laughs> what's interesting, though, is this topic, I think, is more relevant today than ever in the past. So share with us about your heart and your passion and your um, book, Unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Well, Unexpected, um, we, we joke about our titles of our books as we start to write them because we, God will never let us write something that he doesn't take us through first. Mm. And so we've joked about, we're not going to ever write anything like unexpected again. We're going to write like our trip to the beach or <laughs> you know, Hawaii. <laughs> it's so much more fun than having to wade through the muck of something that is unexpected. And when we started to write this, it was in 2019. I think that's right. Um, like you said, I've lost 2020. So the years have just kind of messed together, but um, it became a year of health problems for me um, mm. and surgery and blood clots and all kinds of mess. And um, the girl who wrote it with me, Bree Harper, she had went through some really tough times personally too. It was just a huge attack. Um, and everything was, we were blindsided. Everything was unexpected. And so we were like, this was a horrible title <laughs> for us to write through because there was a lot of refining and a lot of how are you going to choose to respond when God throws or allows something that's unexpected in your life. And mm, we had some you know, hard conversations with God and, and in turn, he with us as well. How are mm. you going to respond to this? So, um, yeah. And then of course, 2020 hit and unexpected became the theme of the entire <laughs> world. And so, and then, um, yeah, it's just it's been hard. And then we lost my mom to COVID as well. Mm. And so that has been the newest and the hardest unexpected that we've had. But um, I'm so yeah, sorry. I'm so sorry. I know that that I haven't experienced that personally, but I know that you were very close to her. And so I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss. You know, something that you said um, was pretty profound is, is, you know, God is often giving us unexpected things in life. That's just the way life works, but it's up to us how we're going to respond back when those, when life doesn't go like we plan, right? We all make plans and then life happens. And this year has just been such a reminder of that for so many, but it's also been a test of faith for choosing how are we going to respond to these crises and these situations and these challenges and trials and adversities and they're not fun right it's not fun when life is unexpected mm -hmm. but I still have a choice in how I show up to that mm -hmm. absolutely and in your life and your testimony shows that so well as well um you know, even Liz and mom um which has been has rocked our world um in many ways we've been able to look back over the past year and really see the moments that we got to be with her, the intentional times that each one of our the three, or three girls, each of us got to be with her. Um, and even last summer in the midst of COVID, we were able to go and move her into a new home and it was on the lake and we moved her in and stayed for like mm. two months. And 
we were in a little bubble that really didn't know what was going on, except that we couldn't leave. <laughs> we couldn't go out to eat. We couldn't go shopping. We all had to stay put. But um, just looking back on something that was so unexpected and a final blessings that we would have with her, not knowing what was even coming around the bend. But I have to say, Rhea, you know, we can miss all those blessings if we don't choose to look for them. Mm. And that and the theme of our life is, you know, we have to look for God's hand because it's always working. He is always active. He's not just a passive God who's sitting there saying, you know, I'll catch you when you fall or I'm here when you need me. He is always in the midst of our life and always working, but we can miss it if we're not looking for him. And I think that's what's carried us through our pain right now is that we know he's been working. We watched him through every step because he became our lifeline. He was our breath in every decision we had to make, every um, every really hard decision concerning even mom's final days. But um, we knew that he was active and we literally just leaned in to everything that we knew in our faith. Hmm. That is so powerful. You know, this um, wasn't your first book. Your your first book was Choices. And it, what I love about your, your books and devotionals is they you know, choices, again, is something that really applies to all of us, right? Unexpected is something that really resonates with all of us. And again, particularly this year, because it, it has, like, I like the way you said it, theme, the theme for the year was unexpected, right? In so many different ways. And, you know, what's good about that is as you share these, these challenges and perspectives, um, and your insights and your wisdom and learning from that, it, it applies to so many of us. But what's what I appreciated that is your authenticity and sharing, right? You're sharing from a place of, hey, I've been through this. Like you said, God brings us through it before we write about it. And so it's kind of like you you went through that and and you're sharing from that place of, hey, I've I've walked through that. So now let me turn around and share these lessons learned with others. And that, that I think is what makes it so powerful. Thank you. There's, um, there's purpose in what we go through. And I have found that the purpose is not that I'm going to sit here and God tell me how grand stage that we are. Our purpose is in walking along with somebody who will walk behind us and what we've been through. And that's what gives it purpose. You know, do we get to share God? Do we, are we an avenue that he gets to get the glory from? Um, because often we want, what's my purpose? And we want it to be about us. You know, we want to be able to somebody to look at us and this is why you're going through this. And it's not, it's like, I'm going through it so that you can see God. And I hopefully through my choices and being able to share my life and my story with someone else, they'll see God through it and be drawn to him because mm, of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, as you talk, um, what keeps coming to my mind is, you know, as a, whether it's a, a person, a, a woman of faith, or as a leader, an influencer in our homes, in our communities, or businesses, whatever that looks like, or wherever we are in our lives, how we're showing up when the unexpected happens is determining our influence with other people and the lives that we're touching. And, you know, we're called as, as women, as leaders, to be that example and to, to be that light. And I think a lot of times that's, it's kind of a bit of a heavy burden, right? It's kind of like, wow, I've got to be that example because people are, are watching. And yet there's also just so much of a sense of purpose in that and saying, you know what? I know that this God is bringing me through this challenge and this trial, but there is purpose. Now I might not know the purpose right now, and that's where the faith comes in is just showing, I don't always know the reasons, but I know there is a reason. Absolutely. And that is where your faith comes in because oftentimes it may not even be about us. And we tend to think that everything that happens to us is about us or what happened to us. And often what will come through the pipe is that it's actually for someone else's benefit. Um, because of the way we chose to respond, it will impact somebody else. Um, but we are, at nature are very selfish people. And we mm. think that everything that happens is, a, is about me personally, you know, and <laughs> this is a, how I feel about this. And I don't like this. And God's like, I'm really using you as a vessel right now because someone else really needs to meet me and to see me. Mm. And that's where you just have to kind of step back and say, okay, God, I'm gonna trust you in this um, because he's a good God and he will always do what's best for us. It's just who he is. Yeah. 
So one of the stories in the book that um, really, really resonated with me, and, and you can see I'm holding up my book um, so that they can see I've got like sticky notes um, of the sections that really spoke to me in this book. Um, if you're watching the video, if you're listening to the audio, just know that I have pink sticky notes all in the pages <laughs> um, that, that I'm like, oh, this is something I need to pay attention to. And you have a story in the book I'm going to ask you to just share about. And it's a story about Julie and her to-do list. So would you kind of just share that and, and, and what was behind that and how that wove into Unexpected? Absolutely. Um, well, as I shared earlier um, <laughs> with you, Julie is, um, her name was changed to protect the innocent, but <laughs> I will be very transparent with you on this, is that this actually is a, a story that is my life. And I am a very um, checklist person and a to-do mm. person. Um, I feel like at the end of the day, if my paper is checked with all my purple check boxes, that it's been a good day. If it's not, it stresses me out. So um, even when I go to the grocery store, I will make my list as far as which store I'm going to and I know what aisle is what. And so I will make it where I'm going from left to right. And um, so I've, yeah, like I said, this past year, when we first started wearing masks, I put it on, I got the car and I was telling my husband, like, I, that's the fastest trip I've ever made to the grocery store. I got everything. I didn't have to talk to anybody. I didn't really see anybody. Nobody can see anybody with the mask on. It's like, okay, I might like this, you know? And then after, you know, it's kind of fine the first few times and then you realize, no, I haven't talked to anybody today. I haven't mm. seen anybody today. And, and I realized how often things are missed because we behaved the same way before we even had to wear a mask and how many blessings we missed um, just running in and running out and doing our to-do list and, and how many times we might have been the only person that impacted that person on the aisle that we tried to avoid. And, you know, what a blessing. Who knows what that person was going through. They may have just lost a loved one. This might have been their first time out and have been alone, even through COVID, you know, for six months or whatever. But um, just to have somebody even reach up and hand them something that they couldn't get in the aisle before, just any way is the smallest way, sometimes are most impactful. Mm, that is that is so powerful. And, and again, that resonated with me because I'm that to-do list person. I have an app own productivity it's on my desktop it's on my phone and I get to check off the boxes and uh, and you know I'm very task focused and get it done and and that can be a strength but I also recognize that sometimes I'm not maybe allowing those opportunities for unexpected um, interactions that can be right opportunities they can be a, a blessing and it's a powerful reminder to say, you know what, sometimes we need to be open to the moment, right? Don't lose the, the spontaneity, spontaneity and the opportunities for those small interactions that can be very big interactions. Mac right. always says, mm -hmm. when you touch a life, you don't always feel it. And that's what comes, what's come to mind when I hear you talk about that. Yeah. And you think back at Jesus' life and what he did, he didn't carry around a to-do list. He just lived with people. He mm. interacted with them. He got to know who they were and just doing simple life. You know, there were times when he spoke, you know, like the Sermon on the Mount and he spoke to lots of people, but the majority of his life was spent just doing life one-on-one -on -one with people. And we get away from that. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's true, isn't it? Just doing life with, with people and being open to that uh, sometimes you know some of us are more people focused and some people are more task focused but but the whether we're task focused or people focused the whole point is to just move more toward that example that that jesus set for us yeah. part of growth yeah. So where did the, where did the idea, I mean, you touched on, you know, God brings us through it and then we write about it, but, but where did the title or the theme unexpected come from anyway? Yeah. Um, I've been studying about the woman at the well. And if, if you're familiar with um, the story, it's in the Bible and there's a Samaritan woman who had been rejected by her town. Um, she had had a life of hard choices. Some were hers, some were inflicted on her by other people. 
Um, but she lived in a community that was rejected as a whole in society. Um, she even had to go to the well to get her water at a time when the other ladies did not because she was ridiculed. So she would go in the heat of the day. Um, mm. And the story came about where Jesus enters this city and it's not a city that Jews were expected or even went to, they sh it was shunned. So Jesus made a detour through this city and he meets this woman at the well, um, not by accident. He sends the disciples into the city to get food. And so he has an encounter um, with this lady one-on-one. -on -one. And basically what he's saying is, I see you, I forgive you, quit doing the things you've been doing and follow me, make me this relationship, a priority of your life. And um, it was something in her life that was an encounter that was unexpected. It was not something she was seeking. It's not something she even knew was an opportunity or, or was even available to her. And so to watch her life completely change where now she had purpose, she had acceptance. She felt seen for the first time in her life, which is what we need. You know, all of us need to feel seen. We need to know and to feel like we're not alone in this world more so than ever with this pandemic. Um, but a lot of us need to know that there is something available to us that is so bigger um, than the way that we've set our life up. Mm. Um, we also need to know that we're forgiven from the hard choices that we've made before, the bad choices that we've made that may have steamrolled consequences that have really impacted our lives and the ones that we love. But we also need to know the freedom and the restoration that can come from someone else's bad choices that were inflicted upon us and that God's big enough to handle that as well. Mm. Yeah, that is so powerful. Uh, and just when we think about that and the, you know, the, like you said, the consequences and choices and, and how that interacts and impacts not just our lives, but the lives of those people around us. And we don't often think about that um, for sure. So a lot of, a lot of insight in there. So um, to, I, dare I ask what the theme for the next book is going to be, or if there is a next book on your horizon? There is, um, there's a couple. We are actually going to rewrite some of choices um, because there's so much material in each one. So we wanted to kind of break it out and really develop it. And interesting that you say that, because we thought we'll just start at the beginning and it's the choice to love is the first week and we'll just break that out. And then I started realizing, no, the theme for this past year has really been trust. Mm. You know, trust God, trust God, but also as a society and politically, we're all like, who do we trust? Mm. So there was such a, a conundrum and a, even a conflict in, in our lives about truth. And so um, we decided to write it on the choice to trust. Um, and as well, we're also working on a book called... Um, well, I don't know the title yet, so I'm not going to share that yet because we're still working on that. But it is about um, the life of Moses and and how our lives parallel um, each of the events of his life um, and how God showed up in each one of them. And we'll have lots of people's testimonies woven throughout that, that really, shockingly, I mean, we, we don't think that we are relatable to the people in the Bible, but it was really cool to see that uh, this person's testimony actually looks just like Moses did when he was at the Red Sea. And there's so many parallels. So that'll be the next one that I've, that I'm working on. Mm, that sounds, that sounds pretty powerful. Um, yeah. You know, it's interesting that you say that because I think a lot of times we don't think of ourselves as r relatable to the people in the Bible, right? Uh, we, we, have heard these stories and we've read about these stories sometimes for our, our whole life. And we think, well, that was great. And that testimony was great for this person, but my life is different. My life looks different. Mm -hmm. And while the day-to-day -day things that we do, sure, that looks different than it did 2000 years ago, the, the, at the foundational core level, we're still just people making mistakes and learning, you know, how to overcome ourselves and walking through the trials and the challenges of life. And, and that hasn't changed, right? I love the term um, Jonah days, right? I'm like, when you're having a really bad day, that's a Jonah day. But your like worst that. day, you probably haven't been swallowed by a whale. So just keep <laughs> that in perspective. Right. It, it could like be that. worse. <laughs> He's trying. 
That's right. I like that. And the Bible is very clear. There's nothing new under the sun. Um, and we think, yes, it looks differently. Um, but the bottom line is we still have the choice to choose him, to mm -hmm. choose God or to choose ourselves. And, um, our life unfolds based on that choice in and of itself. So, yeah, but the Bible, you know, I've, I've come to really love the Bible as an adult versus as a child, it was something I was supposed to bring and read and get, you know, candy if you read your, memor memorized your verse as a child. But um, it really is a collection, divinely inspired, but a collection of people's lives and stories and how they related and responded to Jesus. And that makes it a little bit more, more relatable when you look at it, because that's also, if they continue to write the Bible, each one of us would have a story in there. You know, I, that's what's going to be really cool about heaven is we're going to hear each other's stories. And that's one thing choosing him is very passionate about too, is sharing people's stories, sharing people, uh, sharing how God has interacted and interceded. Um, when times were like our yoga moments, when we were angry because God was giving grace to someone else, you know, mm -hmm. and we thought that they needed the wrath of God, you know, or he was calling us to go and reach that person in the aisle. And we were like, I got to get my to-do list done. Somebody else can talk to you. You know, there's a great person behind me. I'm out. Um, but yes, I mean, there's so many stories, but each one of our stories are just as powerful. And um, that's just something we're very passionate about at Choosing Him as well. Mm. Um, would you share, if you're comfortable, just a little bit about um, how Choosing Him got to be and, and really your story leading up to, to the whole concept of Choosing Him? Because it's powerful. I yeah. know I've heard you share it a little bit before and it's, it's powerful. Thank you. Um, it didn't come easy. I'll, I'll share that with you. It, um, back in 1992, I was 19 years old, um, had gone to Auburn as a freshman. My family, uh, mom, father, uh, two sisters, all went to the beach with my extended family. And on the way back, someone fell asleep and hit my parents head on. Mm. It killed my father instantly. Um, mom shouldn't survive, um, didn't have a heartbeat when I got to her, it took three, two years of surgeries to bring her back. Um, and then my baby sister was also injured. And so it was just a, a time of all of a sudden this neat, I would, I would describe it as a beaver cleaver world that we lived in. He was a pastor and we had lived this perfect tied up world, you know, that without any um, struggles just unraveled. Mm. And, um, and literally my you know, middle sister was standing in the hospital alone, not knowing if she was going to be you know, the only one that survived. And so it, years of processing this years of going through all of a sudden, why did this happen? Um, actually landed me back to the site of where the accident happened, um, through my work. And they asked me and uh, my coworkers to go with down there and help train. And I was like, anywhere but uh, Columbus, Georgia, which is where the accident happened. Nothing against Columbus, but it represented a severe amount of pain in my life mm -hmm. that I thought I had processed, but I processed it the way I felt like it should be. Not, I fully, I didn't fully hate it to God. So we ended up down there and they, I said, I'll go just make sure you put me at the other part of the city away from everything that happened. I mean, we literally orchestrated every drive around the city and we made sure we didn't drive the same cars. I mean, there was so much trauma associated with it that we tried to control any part that we could. Well, when my coworker and I drive up to the hotel, it was a new hotel, which they had promised me that had been built in the parking lot of the hotel that we stayed in for those mm. three that we were in the hospital. And I, I literally, I mean, you can ask my coworker, I'm sure she thought, well, who is this person? And she is having a mental breakdown. But I was so angry. It's like, why would God bring me back to this? I was so careful to control everything that I felt like I could control. And again, it, I, you know, control, the only thing about control is it's an illusion. Mm. Um, I got into the room and I looked out and I, I just, God and I just had it out. I just lost it and I sobbed and I looked out at everything and I saw the places that we ate, I could see the hospital in the distance, you know, just everything that the smells, everything just came back. Um, and then I heard the most powerful thing in my life that I'll never, ever forget, but it was God just speaking in my, in my head to me and said, Tisha, I brought you back to the place of your greatest pain, 
to encounter the one who took you through it. And I just Mm. stood there for a minute processing that. And then as I looked out and seeing the restaurant and seeing the hotels and um, the hospital and stuff, I began to see the people. And through the people, I began to see God and see the ways that he was the father to the fatherless in that moment that he was the healer who put the doctor that could only one certified in the area to take care of mom, which kept her alive. And so many names of Jesus just started coming and flooding through my head. And it totally changed my perspective to something that was tragic, something that I felt like was done to us, that was taken from us, something that um, we really had been controlled by for 20 years, okay? This is 20 years later. Mm. Um, even though I still had a very strong faith, I'd never turned away, but man, I saw it in such a different light. Um, on one of the weekends, I came home to get some clothes and stuff. And I had a friend who came over. He um, had struggled with drugs and alcohol. We had been friends for four years. He played basketball with my dad. He would go to church with me, but he met me at the house that day. And I, we were sitting on the front porch and he said, Tisha, how can you love and worship a God that would let this happen? Mm. And I sat there and it's like the one question, the why question that we all ask. And here I was with somebody that really was seeking to know who Jesus was, but all of a sudden he was faced with, do I even want to know this God Mm. that you've been telling me about, you know, because right now none of it seems okay. And Maria, I sat there and I looked out and in front of the little walkway was a brick walkway with a line through it. And it was kind of like, you know, when you're fighting with somebody, you draw that line in the sand, you know, mm-hmm. like don't cross this, you know. Um, I looked out and it was like, okay, God was, Tisha, you know, I want your answer. This, he's asking you, are you going to go with me on this or are you going to do it your own way? And it's your choice. Mm. but I want your answer right now Mm -hmm. because he's waiting, but even more so I'm waiting. Oh, I just got chills. (laughs) I mean, and and let me tell you, I'm not a person who hears God's voice. You know, like there's only a couple of times in my life that have really felt like, okay, I'm hearing you. And it's not an audible voice. It is a voice that is just the Holy spirit. That's really speaking to me in my head. But I had, I had to give Billy an answer. He was sitting there, you know, I couldn't just ignore it and walk away. <laughs> so I looked at him and I was like, what choice do I have? I, this is too much for me to handle life. I, I don't even know how to process this. I'm 19 years old. Like, how do mm-hmm. I, am I going to even have to raise my sisters right now? I don't even know if mom's going to make it at this point. So I just looked at him and I said, like, I don't have any option because I can't imagine having to go through this without my heavenly father, because it's too much for me. And um, that was really where Cheese and Him came from was in that moment, that line in the sand was, what are you going to choose? Mm-hmm. Are you going to choose to try to fight this life through your own? And because you're going to struggle, you're going to sink, mm-hmm. or are you going to go and let me guide you through this and make purpose out of your pain? And that's really where Cheese and Him became my anthem. It became my lifelong um, calling, truthfully. Mm. That is so powerful. Thank you for sharing. I mean, it's just such a strong reminder that every single one of us have those choices and, you know, they're ours to make. Um, it's, it's a freedom, but like any freedom, it comes with responsibility. And uh, that's, that's the, you know, the kind of the conundrum in choices is they come with consequences, positive or negative, and um, we get to choose. <laughs> Ah, oh, Tisha, thank you so much for just sharing on both on unexpected and sharing a bit about your story and your passion. And there's so many good, um, I'm going to have to go back and listen to this recording and, and get some of those quotes that you've shared. Um, one that, that, that just really are, are filled with insight and wisdom. Um, where I know your website is choosinghimministries.org. Uh, are your books available there? And how do we connect with you and, and give us all of that information? Sure. Yes. The books are available on the website um, at Amazon or Barnes, Barnes and Noble as well. You can get them there, but there, there is a link I think, to Amazon on our website. Um, you can connect through us on the website. Um, if you need to email us, it's info at choosinghimministries.org. And that will get you to our team as well. 
Um, and we are on Facebook, Choosing Him Ministries, um, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Awesome. Awesome. I know you put out a regular blog and um, also just encouragement um, for women particularly. And, and um, so, yeah, you know, it's just lots of resources where you're just putting out encouragement and we all need that encouragement. So thank you for what you do in that. Thank you, Bria. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, um, be blessed. And I can't wait to read um, the next the next book and, and see what that's all about. So I'm going to stay posted. I will put the links to the your website and all of that in the show notes, because I know people are going to want to connect with you. So thank you, my friend. Thank you. It was my blessing. Have a good day. You too.